Hello everyone, you are welcome to this lesson. I hope you are having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to learn about indefinite integrals. Okay, so I'm going to take you through some things that you have to know about indefinite integrals. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what I have for you in this video. Okay. So let's say we have the function f of x, okay, which is equal to x to the power 4 plus 3x minus 9, okay. So as we have this function here, and I ask you that what function did I differentiate to get this function? What, what will come into your mind if I ask you this question? Okay. So first to continue with the question I'm, I'm asking, okay, let's look at something here. First of all, let's find the derivative of this, fun this function that I have here, okay. If you find the derivative, you are going to have f prime of x, okay, which will be equal to 4x cubed, okay, plus 3, okay. I'm doing this just to remind you of how differentiation works, okay. So you know that if you have to differentiate something like this, Okay, you multiply the whole term by the exponent, then we reduce the exponent by 1. Okay, so that's what I did. And then, you know, this is a constant. If you find the derivative, you are going to get 0. Okay, and then this is 3x. If you find the derivative, the x becomes 1. So at the end, you are just going to have what 3. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so after finding the derivative of the given function, this is what we get. Okay. I'm just telling I'm just teaching you this okay to remind you of how differentiation works okay so now let's go back to the question me asking you that what function did we differentiate to actually get this function here okay so let's start with the first term okay the first term is x to the power 4 okay we have what x to the power 4 okay so what expression did we differentiate to get this x to the power 4 here okay so since in differentiation we reduce the power by one you might think that we actually differentiated x to the power five to get x to the power four but don't forget that in differentiation we multiply the whole term by the exponent and then we, before we reduce what the exponent by one okay so should it be that this was the should it be that this was the actual expression that we differentiated to get the x to the power four then that will not be the case because if you differentiate x to the power 5, then we are rather going to get 5x to the power 4. Okay, so we can see that we differentiated x to the power 5 to get what the x to the power 4. But let's look at something here. You will see that we have a 5 here, right? So I can divide this expression by 5 so that I can get rid of what this 5 here. Okay, so what would then happen is that if we actually differentiate x to the power 5 divided by 5 then that's when we are actually going to get what the x to the power 4 okay because if i differentiate this okay if i differentiate this here that's when i'm going to have let me write it as 1 over 5 x to the power 5 okay so if i differentiate this here that's when i'm actually going to have 1 over 5 multiplying 5x to the power of 4 right so now this 5 and this 5 will cancel out then i'm now going to get what the x to the power 4 which is the same thing that we have here okay which is the reason why what we divided here by what 5 so that we can get what the x to the power of 4 so what this means is that we actually differentiated 1 over 5 x to the power of 5 just to get what the x to the power 4 and not what the x to the power 5 okay so this is how integration works okay so we are trying to get the function we differentiated to get what this function here okay so this is what integration is about okay it's about reversing differentiation okay so let's look at the second term the second term is what 3x okay we have 3x okay all right so if i ask you that what function did we differentiate to get 3x what are you going to do okay so let's 
focus on the x okay let's leave the theory okay let's focus on what the x okay so simply because uh, simply because we reduce the power when doing differentiation you might think that we actually differentiated x squared just to get what the x right but if we should differentiate x squared we are going to get what 2x right and if you multiply by the theory then you're actually going to get what 6x which is wrong okay so let's look at what is going to happen we have what 3x right but when we differentiated x squared we had 2x okay which means that you have to what, get rid of what these two so the only way to get rid of these two is to divide this expression what by two okay then at the end we are going to have what our theory x so what that means is that we actually differentiated we actually differentiated theory x over two okay this is what we actually differentiated okay because if i differentiate it differentiated 3x squared over 2 sorry okay this is what it means okay so what this means is that we actually differentiated 3x squared over 2 just to get to what the 3x okay because if i differentiate 3x over 2 you are going to have 3 over 2 multiplying what 2x okay and then this and this will cancel out then at the end we are going to get to what our 3x okay so that's what it means so this is how we do integration okay when it comes to what the powers of what x okay so at the end let's look at the last term also you see that we just have what minus nine here okay and then the value the expression we integrated to get minus nine will be nine x because when you differentiate nine x the x becomes one so at the end okay so at the end we are just going to get what minus 9 okay don't forget the negative okay so at the end let's look at what you are going to have so at the end okay the function we differentiated to get the f of x will be 1 over 5 x to the power 5 okay plus 3 over 2 x squared minus what 9x okay this will be the function that we differentiated to get what to get to get this function that i have here okay let's take note of this we can try to see if we are going to get the answer okay so let's let's differentiate this okay so if i differentiate this for the first term you're going to have one over five okay multiplying five x to the power of four right and then for the second term you're going to have three over two multiplying or two x and then for the last thing, we're just going to have what minus nine. Okay, so you see that this will cancel out this, this will also cancel out this. So at the end, you're going to have f prime of x to be equal to x to the power of four plus three x minus nine. Okay, so you see that this is actually the function that we differentiated. Okay, to get this expression here. Okay, let's take note of this. All right, so why are we doing this? Okay, so first of all, um, I'm teaching you this, okay, to help you understand and know how to go about integration problems, okay, and also and also understand what integration is about when it comes to definite integrals. Okay, so let's look at something else again, okay. Let me free up some space. Okay, let's just continue. That's going to take time. Okay, so let's look at something here. Okay, so we have the function f of x, okay, to be equal to 1 over 5, x to the power 5, okay, plus 3 over 2, x squared, minus what? 9x okay this is what you have okay and then if you differentiate this okay if you differentiate this we are going to have x to the power 4 plus what 3x minus 9 okay let's take note of this all right so what if okay what if we differentiate this other function also let's say f of x because 1 over 5 multiplying x to the power 5 plus 3 over 2 multiplying x squared 
minus 9x plus 24. Okay, what if we differentiate this function also? If we differentiate this function also, okay, we are going to get x to the power 4 plus 3x minus 9 again. This is because the derivative of this 24 here, which is a constant, will be equal to what? 0. Okay, so even if we differentiate this expression here, we are still going to get what? The same answer as we got for this. Okay, let's look at another expression. So let's say we have that same function f of x, okay? But this time around, it is going to differ by a constant. So let's say 1 over 5 x to the power 5 plus 3 on 2 x squared minus what, 9 x. And in this case, we have what? Minus 1,954. If I differentiate this also, we are still going to get 1 over 5 x to the power 5, okay, plus 3 over 2 sorry i'm just writing it if you differentiate that also you're going to have x to the power 4 plus what 3x minus 9 you're still going to get that so you see that how do the functions differ by the value of the constant okay but if you differentiate it we are still going to get the same answer okay we are still going to get what okay so what this is telling us is that if we differentiate any function f of x okay which is equal to 1 over 5 x to the power 5 plus 3 over 2 x squared okay minus 9 x plus c where c is a constant if we differentiate any function of this form we are still going to get our derivative to be equal to x to the power 4 plus 3 x minus 9 okay this is because if we differentiate what we have here okay the value of the constant c here okay will be zero okay will be zero so for that reason we are still going to get this no matter the value of c okay just like we saw in the previous example at first you used 24 here but you still got the same answer now we use minus 100 and 1954 here and then we still got the same answer here so no matter the value of c or no matter the value of the constant you are still going to get this as our answer okay so we are using this arbitrary constant c here because we don't know the specific constant value that this expression actually came with because it can take any constant value and then we are still going to get this as our derivative okay so because we don't know the specific the specific value of the of the constant we are just putting c there because any number that we are going to put there will still give us this answer okay so this is to tell us that we can differentiate infinite number of functions okay okay we can differentiate infinite number of functions but no matter the the function we are still going to get this as our derivative okay all right so now let's go ahead and look at the definition of what indefinite integer Okay, guys, now let's look at the definition of indefinite integrals, okay? So I have this um, definition here, which is that given a function f of x, okay, an antiderivative of f of x is any function f of x such that the derivative of f of x will be equal to what? This f of x, okay? I'm using small f and then the capital F here. So let's take note of that, okay? So let me explain this to you okay so let's take our small f of x okay to be equal to 2x squared okay and then if you have this function here okay the antiderivative of this function okay will be the capital f of x okay and for this capital f of x here if you find the derivative of this capital f of x then you are going to get our what, f of x here okay so this capital f of x now becomes the antiderivative of what f of x okay so now let's look at what i'm going to do here okay so we said that our f of x is equal to what 2x squared okay so f of x will be a function that when we differentiate we are going to get what our small f of x back okay so let's look at what that function will be so that function will actually be 
2x to the power 3 divided by 3. Okay, don't worry about this. I will teach you how to go about it if you are new to this. Okay, so this is our capital F of x. Okay, so what you have here is, is trying to tell us that if we find the derivative of this capital F of x, then you are going to get what our F of x back. Okay, so let's try that and see. So let me write this as 2 over 3 x cube okay so let's find the derivative of capital f of x if you find the derivative let's leave the constant and then if you differentiate x cube you are going to have 3 x squared okay so you see that this and this will cancel out and at the end you are going to have what 2 x squared okay so we're giving f of x okay and this is what it's capital f of x which is what 2 over 3 x cube okay but if you differentiate the capital f of x we are going to get what our f of x back okay so let's go back to the definition and read for a better understanding it says that given a function f of x an antiderivative of f of x is what any function capital f of x such that the, der the derivative of capital f of x will give us what f of x back okay so this function here okay this function here now becomes what our antiderivative okay because when you differentiate that function then we are going to get our f of x back okay let's take note of this that's what the definition says okay so let's continue if f of x is any antiderivative okay if capital f of x is any antiderivative of what f of x then the most general antiderivative of f of x is called an indefinite integral okay it's supposed to be an i made it n okay so let me read it again. If f of x is any antiderivative of f of x, then the most general antiderivative of f of x is called the indefinite integral. Okay, and it, is, and it is denoted as the integral of f of x with respect to x equals what? Capital F of x plus c, where c is an arbitrary word constant. Okay, so you are trying to say that if capital F of x is any antiderivative of what this small f of x here, then the most general antiderivative of f of x is called what the indefinite integral. Okay, we are calling it general because of this c here. Okay, because we don't know the particular value of this c here. Okay, should we know the value of this c, there's not going to be a general antiderivative anymore okay but because you don't know the value of the c we are considering it to be a general ant antiderivative so what that means is that if you differentiate any function if you differentiate any function of this form here you are going to get this f of x here that we integrated to get this okay so that's what it means so let's go ahead so this symbol here okay this symbol here is called the integral symbol this is called the integral symbol okay and then f of x okay is called the the integrand okay it is called the integrand the integrand and then the dx there is called the the differential The differential and then x is the integration integration variable integration variable and then the c is known as the constant of what integration Okay, guys, and also the process of the process of finding indefinite integral is known as integration. Okay, or let's say if I have this expression here, the integral of f of x dx. If I have this expression here, I can also read it as the integral of what f of x with respect to what the variable what x. Okay, we can read it that way, or we can also say that what. We are integrating what f of x or we can see that the integral of what f of x which okay so let's say i have the function okay the integral of what let's say you have the integral of x to the power 4 okay plus 3x 
minus 9 okay and then i bring my dx here okay so what some students do is that they normally omit the dx okay so instead of writing it this way okay they actually write it as the integral of what x to the power 4 plus 3x minus 9 then they don't bring what the dx and that is actually wrong okay so think of the integral symbol and then the differential as open and close parenthesis okay so the integral symbol becomes the open parenthesis and then the differential becomes what the closing parenthesis okay so the expression you are differentiating must be between them okay so that's why you have to bring your differential here okay so if you don't bring the differential it's like you writing an expression of this form x to the power 4 plus 3x minus 9 then you don't close it okay and that is wrong so you must close it that's the reason why you must bring the dx at the end okay so this is the open parenthesis and then this is the closed parenthesis okay so let's take note of that let's look at the reason why we do this so let's look at the first function you have the integral of x to the power 4 plus 3x minus 9 dx okay this is what we have all right so if i'm to integrate this okay i'm going to get 1 over 5 x to the power 5 okay plus 3 over 2 x squared minus what 9x plus c this is what i'll get if i should integrate that okay so let's look at something else too so what if we have the integral of x to the power 4 plus 3x dx okay minus 9 okay let's integrate this also and see what we are going to get okay so in this case what is actually happening is that we are integrating what is between the parentheses right which which means you are integrating just this with respect to what x okay because that's the only expression in the between the integral symbol and then the differential okay so if, if you integrate that you're going to have 1 over 5 x to the x to the power 5 okay plus 3 over 2 x squared okay plus the constant of integration then we bring our minus 9 here so you see that this is actually different from what we had previously because from the previous one we had minus 9x but this time around we have what just minus 9 this is because we integrated this okay but this time around because the minus 9 was not in the parenthesis we didn't integrate it so we just brought what minus 9 day so this is why this is actually important okay so let's look at another example if we should have the integral of x to the power 4 dx okay plus 3x minus 9 if you should have this okay if you should have this okay then you are actually integrating only the x to the power 4 right so you are going to have 1 over 5 x to the power 5 plus c okay plus what 3x minus 9 this is what you are going to have okay so you really have to be careful of the, the differential symbol here okay and not only for this reason okay we are going to need it when we are solving problems that involves the substitution rule okay you are going to need it and also it is very important when dealing with multivariate calculus okay so because of that let's take note of that in multivariate calculus you may be integrating the expression you will be having might contain um, two or more variables okay but you might be asked or you will have to integrate with respect to what a specific one so the, the the differential will tell you which variable you are integrating with respect to okay so let's take note of that let's look at another example here okay so let's look at this too i have the integral of what 2x dx okay and also i have the integral of what 2t dx okay so let's look at something here so for the first one if you integrate this okay you're going to have x squared plus c okay this is what you are going to have but let's look at, let's look at the second one so for the second one if you look at the differential the variable is what x which means that you are integrating with respect to what x so you can treat this other variable t here as a constant okay so you can write this as t multiplying the integral for 2 okay with respect to what x okay this is what you are going to have and if i integrate this you're going to get 2tx plus what c okay this is what you are going to get so you integrate with respect to what the variable that is uh, showing in the differential okay so that's it